Welcome to a special episode of the Diabetic Podcast. As you can tell, I'm not in my normal podcast studio, and that is because I'm in Florence, Italy, at ATTD, one of the largest diabetes technology conferences. We are talking all about Medtronic's brand new continuous glucose monitors. There are two of them. There is Simplera and Simplera Sync. Now, one of them, Simplera, works with InPen and promises a smart MDI system with their smart insulin pen. And Simplera Sync works with their 780G pump for an automated insulin delivery system. There is so much to talk about with these CGMs. And I heard a lot. I spoke to two representatives, one all about Simplera Sync and the other all about Simplera. Plera, so we'll get to that in just a second, but keep in mind that anything you hear on this podcast or any of my pages is not medical advice. Always consult with your physician before making changes to your healthcare. Let's get into it. So Ali, thank you so much for talking to me about Simplera Sync. Tomorrow I'm talking to Madison about Simplera, but we'll focus on this one. So first, kind of just get into the improvements over the Guardian 4 with the Simplera CGMs. Sure, sure. I think the, the simplest thing to explain about it is uh, it no longer has a separate transmitter. It's all in one. Uh, so it's fully disposable and super easy to put on the body. In less than 10 seconds, someone can have it on their body. No need for overtape um, and no need for charging or cleaning. Uh, so the intent of Simplera is to be just that, very simple. Can you, a lot of people are coming in uh, just listening. Can you just explain to everyone the physicality of the device, what the applicator looks like and what the sensor looks like? Yeah, sure. They, so the sensor itself is a little bit about the size of a quarter, but it's square in shape. Um, uh, and the intent of it is to basically feel like it's invisible on the body. The tape perimeter is not much bigger than the sensor itself, so it shouldn't itch or uh, have any of those kinds of effects uh, once it's worn. Um, and we set up the tape in such a way where, like if you take a shower, it'll actually let the, the hydration underneath your skin kind of just bleed right through, so it won't uh, cause any other irritation as a result of just getting wet. So the tape, we, we spent a ton of time uh, to make sure that it was comfortable, easy to wear, especially for those people that uh, you know, like to exercise a lot and you know, tend to sweat, uh, making it easy for them to you know, forget about the fact that they're wearing a CGM. Uh, aside from that, the Surter uh, is su super easy to use. Um, when, you, when you see it, it, it fits nicely in your hand, um, and the intent of it is really to be pretty intuitive in terms of how to get it onto your body. Uh, take off the cap, place it on the back of the arm, push, and you're ready to rock and roll. Is the sensor approved to be worn anywhere? Is it just on the arm? Currently? Yeah, it's back of the arm for the adults, uh, and then the kids have some other locations as well. But the intent of that is, and all the manufacturers have learned this over time, you get the best performance uh, on the back of the arm, and so that's why all the manufacturers are pretty much aligning to that location. When it comes to the adhesive of the sensor, were there any changes in that material? I know a lot of people have, everyone has a different skin, different irritations yeah. to some adhesives and not others. Did you make any changes to that? Yeah, this is actually a brand new adhesive, and we built it specifically for the purpose uh, for a continuous glucose monitoring. Um, we went so far as to test it uh, in farm workers in Florida uh, in the dirt uh, and the reason for that is we got a lot of feedback that people don't like how over time uh, the tape can look unsightly, uh, get dirty around the edges and whatnot. So it's anti-static and it has a lot of other tricks built into it so that it can look clean for a long period of time. Uh, so yeah, a lot of work went into the tape, believe it or not. Um, and when it comes to warm up period, I know that that is a two hour warm up right, right. now. Do you? plan to make that any shorter yeah, in the future? Yeah, we're going to you know, continue to make enhancements to it. And I think one of the other things we're looking at uh, as a future enhancement uh, is to have people be able to overlap them. And what I mean by that is, uh, you know, when you historically had a transmitter, that one transmitter, you had to you know, take it off weight, put a new one on. The fact that this is all in one now, it gives people the chance to actually wear it ahead of time. Uh, and so before you know, one expires, you could have the other one on and then kind of get the cycle going. And so that's one of the things that we're gonna include as an enhancement. Okay, great. Yeah, and at that point, the warm up doesn't really matter, matter as much. That's no. it, that's it. Is there any grace period to the wear time after the full time of wear? Do you not, get any not extra? at this point. Okay. Uh, again, that's another future enhancement we're talking about doing, yes. Okay, and then I know the wear time is seven days, which is a bit shorter than some others out there. Right. Is that something you see with this specific CGM could be, um, could go longer, or is that something we'd need to see? Yeah, that we're actually working the clinical trials on that as we speak, yeah. Okay, and does this sensor, 
in any way change the 780G algorithm from the Guardian 4? Um, so we're actually implementing some algorithm changes in parallel to it, but it wasn't because of the sensor. It was just an enhancement to 780 that we wanted to make. Um, and they're nits, they're not massive uh, changes. But we did see the performance uh, with Simplera and 780, the combination of the two, things improved, uh, mainly because of the fact that you know, without having to take the downtime of exchanging uh, the transmitter, people are wearing their CGM uh, more often, and as a result of that, are getting better performance. Now, tell me, I, I've never used the 780G myself. Can you tell me a little bit about the experience, what it's like using an Apple Watch and the iPhone app with that, what that kind of looks like, the, the user interaction with Yeah, them. obviously the app basically has all the information that's carried into the pump. So between your CGM graphs, your time and range, uh, also how much insulin you're getting active and then uh, previous history of that too. All that's built into the app, plus your alarms, your alerts, um, and the ability to connect up uh, to the cloud automatically the data from the, from the pump, and then also for a care partner um, to see your data uh, also. And then as it works on the connectivity on the watch, um, essentially you could see your current glucose um, and what's going on with it. And then if you click it again, um, you could actually see your glucose graph um, and what's going on with that. Um, so it's set up that way. There are some systems out there, mostly DIY, that give you that ability to bolus um, log carbs on an Apple Watch yep. uh, app. Are you looking into that? Is that something you would like to? For the next gen product, yeah, we'll, we'll have the means of being, we're not sure if we want to do it from the watch or not. Uh, actually, we're trying to make sure, actually, as the future goes here, uh, to not require people to do anything. Um, and it automatically handles uh, most of those things. Uh, but yeah, the intent is to still have that connectivity and then we'll decide whether or not you can bolus from the watch. Yeah, in some ways, let's get into the algorithm a little bit because I know that your, your meal detection technology is kind of aiming toward reducing a little bit user interaction or kind of making up for mistakes. Can you just tell us a little bit about what that is in the 780G algorithm? Yeah, sure. So, so the way to think about it is uh, we designed the algorithm in such a way where we're expecting people uh, to not give us a perfect carb count. Because uh, let's face it, that's very difficult to do. Uh, and so once you take that into consideration to start with, uh, then everything actually kind of gets a little bit easier. So we're calculating uh, what the actual carbs are, irrespective of what someone inputs um, into the device. Uh, and so what meal detection does is essentially is determining that difference. So uh, in case someone forgets uh, to bolus for a meal, um, we'll actually detect whether or not that's happening through their CGM graph and otherwise. Um, and then we'll add insulin to make up for it. Uh, and so it can't handle, let's just say, a massive meal of 100 grams of carbs. Um, but, you know, you forget a snack, it'll take care of it. Uh, you forget, you know, a 30, 40 uh, gram meal, it'll probably make up for it. Uh, and the intent is to, to be able to do that because, let's face it, life happens. Uh, a lot of it has more to do with the fact that the way the algorithm is designed um, is expecting the unexpected, and because of that, it can uh, accommodate and make up uh, the difference. And so that's really how meal detection works. Yeah. Speaking of unexpected, that's why we have alerts to alert us when we have a, a higher or low or an incoming one. Can you tell me a little bit about the alerts you're going to see with Simplera and how you're going to interact with them, where you're getting these alerts? Yeah, so at least with the 70, uh, Minimed 78G system, you would get the alerts either on the pump or on your app uh, or both, uh, depending upon how things are set up. Um, you can set them up to be vibrate or alarms um, directly. Uh, so you know, auditory or, or vibration, um, and either in the pump or in the, in the app. Um, and then the way that they're set up uh, is really more along the lines of what the user would want or a customer would want. Um, the only ones that are hard coded um, are lows um, for obvious reasons. Um, but the remainder of them you know, are up to the user in terms of what they want. So if they want to be alerted on high uh, or uh, alerted due to you know, uh, getting close to low, that's where, how things would go. When it comes to MARD of this CGM, I found it pretty difficult to find this information. Is there a MARD for this that's yeah. been announced? Yeah, it's 10.1. Okay. Uh, and so it's a little bit better than our Guardian 4 sensor, but yeah, it's 10.1. Okay. It's, it's in our labeling. Okay, and now some people would, some people, that is a little bit higher than other CGMs out there. Sure. 
How has that affected, or does that affect the algorithm at all? Not at all. I mean, we actually designed the algorithm to accept a, a sensor that can go up to 20% MART uh, on purpose, because even though MART is a number, it's an average, and some are going to be better and some are going to be worse. And so we have to design things for, for safety, and of course, we design them for the extents of the, the performance that we can potentially see. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of safety margin there. I feel like I've been hearing this a lot lately that MARD doesn't have as much merit as it maybe once had. Does MARD still matter? I mean, I, I'm not going to sit here and say that it's not important. It matters. Um, but I think what we've tried to do is make sure that uh, the accuracy happens where it needs to happen. And what I mean by that is, you know, most of the time, uh, the MARD is actually a function of the data points that you get. And when you do a study, most of the data points are when somebody is between 100 and 140. That's not a place where you're going to make a decision. Uh, and so what we've been designing the sensor to do is actually operate uh, very accurately in the hypo region, so let's say under 70. And actually, if you look at our data, which is in our manual, um, our hypo performance is very, very good. So usually how these things are tested are just when people are in, uh, you know, averaging between 100 and 140. And what we've been trying to do is make sure that the sensor is accurate in the low and then accurate in the highs where people are going to make dosing decisions. Uh, and that's exactly how this uh, sensor is set up. And if you actually look at the data, the place where we don't perform as well as the competition is actually uh, between 100 and 140. And the place that we actually perform very well is below and above uh, on purpose because we know we're going to be dosing insulin off of it and people are going to be making decisions off of it. And so we focused our attention there. So. To, to go back to your original question, does MARD matter? Yeah, it matters, but the real issue that we're trying to solve for is to make a sensor where people can trust making a decision off of it, and it's those other regions that matter more in, in that regard. Interesting. Can the Simplera sync that is meant for the 780G system, can that also be used standalone if someone decides to take a break from the, the pump for a bit and they just want to go solo? Yeah, technically it can. Okay. Um, However, the Simplera, as is, cannot be used with sync uh, the other way around. Um, we did that on purpose so that people have options. Yeah. Okay. Is there a price difference between these CGMs? It depends on the region. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I can't. Yeah, it's hard to nail yeah, that yeah, down. down. <laughs> yeah. And so Simplera Sync uh, received CE Mark. Was it in January? Yes. So it received CE Mark. When can you expect to see it release? In Europe, I guess. Yeah, it's summertime. Yeah, okay. it's summertime it'll be more than likely. And a lot of it has to do with our manufacturing ramp up. You know, we have a very large install base of 780 uh, uh, people on 780 in Europe. And, you know, when, when we release it, we want to make sure that it's available to all of them very quickly, uh, which means that the manufacturing has to be in place to accommodate that. Um, and that manufacturing right now is that line is getting set up to be able to accommodate. So when, what about the United States? I have a lot of people tuning in from there. Is there any information on that? Is it with the FDA? It is. And that's, okay. the, that's the most I'll be able to say about it. So, it, you know, it's going through this process. How long has it been with the FDA? A while, but uh, we, we submitted it. Uh, actually, I don't want to, I don't remember the exact day, but it, it's in front of them now. And, we're, we've made quite a bit of progress and we expect to make more over the next couple of months. Great, and Simplair is also with them. Mm -hmm. Okay, the standalone. Great, and do you have like, um, are you able to list out a few countries where the sync is coming in the summer? Do you have that? Uh, I, I, you know, we're gonna go to the major uh, areas within Europe. Um, I don't wanna promise because it depends on uh, how fast the manufacturing ramps up that more countries will get added. Uh, so I don't wanna make any promises. So it depends on how well the manufacturing goes. Um, but yeah, the, most of the major regions uh, that you know have big install bases are going to see it first. Okay, and then what about ages for the Simplera Sync? How, how old do you have to be to use that? Yeah, so the Sim for? Simplera Sync is limited by the algorithm. The algorithm right now in Europe uh, is limited to seven-year-olds. Okay. Uh, we have a plan to make that go all the way down to two, but currently it's at seven. And then the Simplera in the standalone form uh, uh, is, is for two and above. Okay, and in the United States for the 780G system, who is that approved for? So with the Guardian 4 sensor, it's, yeah. it's seven and above as okay. well. Okay, okay, yeah. great. All right, well, thank you so much for giving me all that information and bearing with everything happening around <laughs> us. There was an ambulance, there was a cart, there was another cart, there was another <laughs> ambulance. Uh, but yeah, this was super informative and I'm excited to talk to Madison to hear more about Simplera, which is gonna happen right now.
Today's episode is sponsored by T1D Exchange. You can directly make an impact on diabetes healthcare, treatments, and technology by participating in the T1D Exchange registry. It starts with a simple survey about your life with T1D, and it only takes about 15 minutes. After that, you'll have a personal portal with ongoing T1D study and survey opportunities. Plus, some of these studies even offer compensation. Signing up with the link in the show notes helps support my channel and it allows me to continue putting out free content. You can sign up at t1dexchange.org slash diabetic or click that link in today's show notes. Madison, welcome to the show. Thank you. So yesterday I spoke to Ali all about Simplera Sync and how that CGM works with the 780G system. But today I wanna to talk to you all about Simplera and how it works with InPen. Mm -hmm. Medtronic's calling this a smart MDI system. So what exactly does that mean? Yeah, so our smart MDI system is really thinking of two components. You have your CGM, which is our Simplera CGM. Um, we've got some really exciting updates with our latest sensor. So it's the um, two-step insertion process, uh, unscrewing the cap, inserting it, and then that is working with the Simplera app and then you have the NPIN, which is being used with the NPIN app. And so what we're doing is creating this smart MDI system that's bringing together insulin data and CGM data to kind of re-envision the way MDI is managed. Yeah, and so we actually met at ADA almost a year ago and we talked about NPIN. So if you wanna learn more about NPIN, Go watch that video, I'll put it in the description. So first, let's start with, there's, there's two apps here, right? There's the standalone app that, that connects with the CGM, and then there's the InPen app. Mm -hmm. So I wanna talk first about the Simplera app. Can you just kind of walk us through what that app looks like? Yeah, so when you're thinking of the system, the way I really describe the Simplera app being used is for sensor management. So I need to pair a new sensor, I want to end a sensor session, and then that's where your low glucose management is gonna happen as well. So predicted low alerts, low alerts, urgent low alerts. Okay. And that's the primary way that I would use the Simplera app because we're really thinking of it as a system. And so then the rest of the functionality would come within the NPIN app. Okay, so when it comes to alerts, are the alerts coming from the NPIN app? Or like specifically like high, low blood glucose alerts, are those coming from the Simplera app or the InPen app? So the way we think of the system, we have smarter high glucose management and alerts within the InPen app. Okay. We don't have low glucose alerts within the InPen app. Okay. So I think it really kind of makes sense if I talk about more of the features that you get within the InPen app because I think it'll yeah. add more context and then I can always touch back on what you get from the Simplera app. Okay, yeah. But I think it gives shine some light. So with the NPIN app, you're able to connect the sensor glucose data. And so within that, we, we talk about that being kind of the primary therapy display for the user. Okay. So that's where you get your current sensor glucose reading, you see trend arrows, and you see all your insulin doses being logged. That's also where you get access to the dose calculator. So it really brings together the full picture of management in the NPIN app. And then separately, I, I say the Simpler app, you know, it's opened every once in a while if I have a low blood sugar that I need to acknowledge or I need to repair or um, start a new sensor. Okay, and, and these alerts, are they're, I'm assuming they're sent to your phone mm -hmm. and then do they also get sent to uh, any smartwatches? They do, so the Simplera, app has smartwatch integration. So with the Apple Watch, you can see the CGM tracing and display, but okay. also the NPIN alerts, so the high glucose, correcting your high glucose, and if you potentially miss a dose, those alerts come on your watch as well. Okay, and the app that you're looking at, is, like is there a simple, I know you get the alerts through probably notifications sent to the phone, is there an actual app? Is it like the yes. Simplera app that's living on your uh, Apple Watch if you have one? Yeah, so we have a, it's a, a watch app. Okay. And so okay. you actually see the sensor glucose tracing and if there are events that are logged and the trend arrow. Is there a complication? You know those like little, um, the little images like you can hold down and, and edit them. Is there one for Simplera? Yes. 
Oh, okay, cool. So when it comes to customization, are there like there there are, are other systems out there where you're able to kind of adjust when you get alerts? Mm -hmm. Are you able to do that here? Um, and and would that be done on Simplayer or Inpen? How does that work? Yeah. So this is the exciting part for me. Okay. And <laughs> so this is where we have our smarter actionable dosing alerts. So what I always am kind of talking about is that with CGM only or CGM alone, it's just looking in the context of what is your current glucose, how quickly is it rising or falling. But when you think about diabetes management, it's more than just glucose. It's when did I take insulin last? How much insulin did I take? How much is still actively working in my body? So this is where we talk about the smart MDI because now, instead of just being alerted because you're rising quickly or you cross a threshold, you can get alerts only when we detect that there's action needed and give you, identify what action that is. Okay. Your glucose is rising quickly and you haven't taken a, a bolus dose recently. Did you forget to bolus? That's one of them. Okay. And then the second one is um, there's a correction opportunity. So your glucose is high and IOB is low or zero. Which is insulin on board. Insulin, yeah, thank you. No and so that would be a sign that there's actually something for you to do, right? So not, as, not only is your glucose high, but you need additional insulin to fully get back down to target. Okay. When it comes to these alerts, are they recommending actual like units to be taken or is it just like, hey, we noticed you haven't taken some insulin, you need something, address this? Yeah, that's a good question. So right now there is, you set up an alert threshold. Okay. So instead of thinking about, tell me when I'm 180 or tell me when I'm 200, it's tell me when I need one unit. Tell me when I need two units. So you kind of choose your level of tolerance or engagement. Yeah. The way I describe it is like, what amount of insulin am I willing to get off the couch and go <laughs> grab my insulin yeah. pen for? And so that allows it, to, you know, it's customizable. It's really able to be personalized to meet your needs. Yeah. And, um, and then in return, that allows you as a patient or user to be able to turn off your high alerts on the CGM app because now the NPIN app is driving smart, actionable, high glucose management. Yeah, I think what I like about that is it's kind of combining two notifications into one. And it's also kind of having us, the user using this, rethink about their treatment rather than being, oh, I'm high. It's like, no, like here's the actionable thing that I can do to address what is happening right now. So that's a cool way. I think it's always cool when a new technology comes out and has us rethink the way we treat exactly. diabetes. Because you know? it's more than just glucose. It's mm -hmm. glucose and insulin. And exactly. um, you know, we've heard and talked about this concept of alert fatigue and it's, it's real. Uh, and I think often as a user myself or a patient, we're, we're stuck choosing, do I want a high glucose, maybe alert threshold so that I don't get as much burden throughout the day? Or do I want it to be lower, but that comes at the risk of more alerts that I can't always do something about. Yeah. So if I just ate, I took insulin, and my glucose starts to rise, there's, and if, if I got a, just a high alert from a CGM, there's nothing for me to do. I just took insulin. I'm just in the point where I'm waiting and watching for my insulin to do its job. Mm -hmm. And so these ones kind of, you know, it rethinks really the, the experience to move toward, not just is your glucose high, but here's something you can do about it. Mm -hmm. So Medtronic has uh, an area at ATTD where they are putting Simplayers on, uh, on people. Uh, and I tried my hardest to be able to do that, but uh, apparently the FDA still controls me, even when I'm in Europe. So I wasn't allowed to put it on. Uh, luckily, there's a bunch of people that are trying it. I'm talking to them, but I want to talk to you about it. Have you tried Simplera? We have opportunities through like clinical, in-house clinical yeah. studies to be able to try the sensor. So I have had an experience where I've been able to wear it. Um, and I really, I really love it. I mean, the, the all-in-one, fully disposable. But what's stood out to me is how nice the adherence um, 
of the tape is mm -hmm. and not requiring any overlay. And this might sound crazy, but whenever I take, when I take the CGM off at the end, I didn't have like the, you know, the ring of, uh, like adhesive or yeah. 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 So okay. That's nice. I like that. Everybody thinks about that, but that was like a pleasant surprise. Like, wow, my arm's just clean now. <laughs> there's, I feel like there's so many little things like that, uh -huh. that we go through that when something like that changes, you're like, oh wow, this is like a, a, a nice new experience. <laughs> exactly. So uh, back to kind of customization for, for the apps, are there any types of silence modes that you can turn on? Yeah. So in the Simplair app, you have the option to mute all alerts and you set the time frame that you want them to be muted for. Okay. Um, so that's one option. And, and are there any alerts that will not be muted for that? Urgent low. Okay. Yeah, so okay. less than 54 is, okay. um, you, you're always gonna be alerted when you're urgently low. And then on the end pen side, um, it takes a similar approach, but we have this concept of, do you want us to override your phone settings and follow the, like, the notification preferences that you've configured? Like, like do not disturb Basically, yeah. modes and stuff? Okay. So having that override your phone settings means if you have your phone on silent or do not disturb, you're saying, I give you permission to override that setting. Um, but if you just toggle it off, then we're going to follow what you're phone is set to. So if it's on do not disturb or just on vibrate, or we honor the, um, the device setting at that point. Okay, yeah, that's great. So I live in New York, I see Broadway shows a lot, and there's nothing better than being able to, to just put on my, I, ha I have like a setting called showtime. So oh, do not disturb, work, and then showtime. So yeah. when I put showtime on, I assign which apps I wanna have access and stuff. So um, I'm happy to hear that. Um, what about sharing? If someone's wearing the Simplera, can they share their readings with family members, support team, whoever? Yeah, so within Simplera app, you're able to um, go through the process of basically establishing care partners. And so you, you identify who you wanna share your data with, how you wanna share it, and then they get a link and they're able to kind of set up and, and set up what they need to be able to track, but yeah, there's a care partner app, and then as the user, you configure and identify who you wanna share your data with. Okay, great. And now, we didn't get into this with Ali, but calibrations, uh, are there any, and like, are there any mandatory ones, and if you choose to calibrate, can you do that? Right, so there are no finger sticks required, no calibrations required. Um, there is an option to calibrate, but it's actually not, um, it's not necessarily recommended or advised, but there is the option too within okay. the app if you want it. Yeah, I think just so many people out there, I think even me included, just like the ability to, uh -huh. even though there, like lots of companies are like, no, no, no calibrations. It's like, no, but we want to. So thank you for, for including that. Yeah. Um, and then is there a Siri shortcut? to ask what your blood sugar is. Can I say, hey, blah, blah, blah. I'm not gonna say it now because I'm gonna activate everyone's. What is my blood sugar? And if not, can you please bring it? That's a great question. And I would love to yeah. know that, so. It's a very iPhone thing also. I'm being so iPhone centric, sorry, Android people. Also, is this app on, are these apps on Android also? Or is it just iPhone? No, both, okay. both platforms, Okay, Android amazing. And iOS. So I'm sure people would love to be able to say, hey, blah, 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 what is my blood sugar? Or hey, blah, 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 like, yeah. you know, what is my blood sugar? And it's just such a nice way, especially when you're driving, yeah. you're able to ask for that crucial information and not pick up your phone, mm -hmm. uh, which you're not supposed to do, but I'm sure you're allowed to do if you're looking at your blood sugar. But um, okay, cool, so maybe you can, um, Back follow up, follow yeah, up and we'll let you know in the description or in a pinned comment if that is available and if it's not, Medtronic, you heard it first. Now let's get into the InPen app and what that looks like. Yeah. What, are, what is the information you're seeing and how are you kind of interacting with that mm -hmm. app? Mm -hmm. So within the InPen app, like, like I was sharing before, um, it's bringing in your sensor glucose data, real time, your trend rates, if there are any, and then it's showing active insulin. So based on the recent doses that you've taken and then the therapy settings that have been configured, so there's this setting called duration of insulin action, which basically means when you take a dose, how long does that dose last in your system? 
So what you'll see on the, the home display is glucose, trend arrow, active insulin, and then at the very top is the uh, dose calculator. Mm -hmm. So kind of, if you open the app quickly, you can tap on the dose calculator and that'll bring you in. And so for this, this is um, you know a product that's available in Europe and outside of the United States. And so there is where the sensor glucose is pre-populated into the dose calculator. And then that's also where you identify your meal therapy type. So are you counting carbs? or do you take um, fixed doses? Or, so like in that example, if I was on fixed dose, I would open the app and I would say, I'm eating breakfast. And it would already know what my glucose is, it would know how much I take for breakfast, and then it's just gonna say, take five units. Oh, is that like a pre-programmed, like if, if you're someone who is like just have, has a ritual, you can have a pre-programmed button. Exactly. Oh, I like that. Okay, yeah. that's cool. So you could do the like breakfast, lunch, and dinner doses, or you can even estimate the size of your meal based on the carb content. So I'm eating breakfast and this is a low carb breakfast or my medium carb breakfast or my high carb breakfast. And so based on the therapy, like the selection, then that just populates how much insulin you should take. Oh, yeah. Now that we've left the dose calculator. Oh yeah, there's, there's more, there's more <laughs> to the app, right? Back to, back to the home screen. You have your glucose tracing and graph that shows the doses, it shows the meals, and then you have a log book that's logging all of those events. Okay. And then the one other thing that I actually find really nice and um, helpful is that I can generate a therapy report from within the app. So I'm not like uploading or plugging something in. It's within the app, I can just generate a new report and it'll show me things like what's my average glucose, my time and range. Over um, a certain period of time that exactly, you choose? Exactly, yeah. Okay. Do you wanna look at the last seven days? Do you wanna look at the last two weeks? So you choose that time frame, and then, you know, not everybody wants to look at that themselves, but as somebody kind of interested, like how's it going? Or, you know, is, are my doses appropriate? I, I can use that to kind of look and see, am I on track or do I maybe need to reach out to my healthcare team? Amazing. Okay, well, I know a lot of people are wondering. Uh, I obviously wasn't allowed to wear it for a reason <laughs> uh, because it is not yet cleared uh, in the United States. So kind of what is the status of it in the United States right now? Let's start with that. Yeah, so the exciting news is that it's actually been submitted to the FDA and it's under review. Okay, cool, so hopefully soon. And then it did receive CE mark in Europe. Mm -hmm. So that means it is approved in, in one way or another for Europe. But what is the kind of availability looking like here right now? Yeah, so in the last few months, we've been expanding. And so we're currently in 13 different countries and we have more waves of launches planned where we continue to roll out and expand um, globally. And the way that we're really packaging this is because we talk about, you know, CGM alone is not enough and there's, there's more to the story. And so that's where we're, we're having this as a system. So that's our smart MDI system, which would come with the Simplera sensors, as well as the end pin. So you're getting a package um, rather than just a standalone sensor. Awesome. Well, we somehow made it through this with very few carts. There is one coming, which means it is the end of this segment. But Madison, thank you so much for coming on. Thank this was so, I learned so much between you and Ali. Um, I feel like myself and everyone watching really has a true understanding of the system, so it's amazing. Yeah. It was a pleasure, so thank you so much for having me. Of course. I hope you enjoyed this episode and learned something new about Simplera. Let me know what you think in the comments. Are you gonna try this out? Are you already using it in Europe? Let me know because I'm not allowed to put it on and I'm really sad about it, but as soon as it comes out in the US, I will try it on and I will make a video about it, so stay tuned for that. I've also got some social videos on it coming out. I spoke to Laura all about her experience wearing it and she had a lot to say. And I've got a lot more content coming from ATTD, so be sure to check those out on my YouTube channel. I'm Justin and I'll tech you later.